is Seahor, and today I'd like to talk about the Octatrack and multiband sound processing on Octatrack of external gear actually. I was working on the minimal techno track for this compilation of in, inside of the community of Easyboat, and I created a really nice sound on, on the Pro Tree, like a bass sound with a lot of sub bass, and there was this kind of crunchy high end or mid range uh, frequency end of the bass which i really wanted to make weird but it was just like you know the sawtooth and it was crunchy and that's pretty much it and i was, I was thinking like okay what what could i do to make this bass line weird and you definitely can make bass line weird by throwing a flanger or a chorus in it or phaser like either of these three or these three together will make it weird indeed but the problem is the moment you introduce any of these three effects on the baseline with sub you're stepping into dangerous zone of uh, phase issues and because all these effects are affecting the phase of the sound and the sub frequencies they don't want to be affected in any way by phase because they're going to jump into weird um, sounding effects like cancelling the sub bass eventually or then multiplying it. So it's going to be a mess. And I was thinking, okay, how can I preserve the sub end of this bass line but make the top end weird or apply chorus or apply some other effects on it? And I was thinking, okay, in Ableton is quite easy, like, and people do it usually like by multiplying the tracks and you go and throw the same VST with the same MIDI on two different tracks. And then you low pass one track, you high pass another track, and then you throw all the effects on high pass um, track. Or there is also a possibility to create chains within one track, which is even more kind of uh, usable, I guess. And then you again, low pass, high pass, and you, throw all the effects there. Or even people do, you know, like they duplicate many tracks and then every single track does its own job on the frequency spectrum with more or less the same MIDI going on. But yeah, in Ableton, okay, I agree on that. I did myself uh, many times like this, but when it comes to Dolores, like what kind of option do I have? Do I, do I even have this option? Or I need to, to do it then in post-production rather? And I was thinking about the Octatrack a couple of days ago and it just hit me like, why can't you do it exactly the same as you do it in Ableton? Because you actually can. And I was like, crap, man, like really? So it's easy. You have like, for example, here, I have the mini log, right? So it goes into input C and D here on the Octatrack. And right now it's being monitored in the mix, like directly through the mix. Uh, yeah, C and D. Uh, goes through the mix directly and we can hear it but you can also do a through track so for example if i go ahead and select the through track here i can play back the mini log through the machine which can be which can have effects on it as well so then you can have one through track on track one for example playing mini log and then you can have another through track which is gonna play mini log again and then same thing, like low pass on track one, high pass on track two, and you're done. Like, and track two is gonna go with all the effects, while track one is gonna preserve the sub bass. Easy. Let me let me show it real quick. So right now I have the sort of default project with all the static um, static machines. Yeah, the only one I changed right now, uh, track one into through machine and. Yeah, let's uh, let's start with uh, listening to what I have there. Right now, it plays through the mixer, basically directly monitoring through the mixer. So there is uh, perhaps for understanding this nerdy stuff, you might need like proper headphones or at least headphones which can. Um, do sub basses and you can hear the bass. So I created this simple um, bass line on the mini log and it has a little bit of sub and also it has sort of crunchy uh, sawtooth uh, high end sort of. 
So and yeah, the problem is to preserve this um, this uh, sub basically. So I'm gonna go into track one, and I'm gonna select. So first of all, I, I need to put all the levels to maximum on all the tracks at the really beginning, be not to have any attenuation in place. So in track one is gonna be inputs C and D, and then I'm gonna go volume all the up and place. I have trick here already. So on track one, and right now we we hear both the mini load playing directly through the mixer and mini load playing through the through machine through the track. And there is a little bit of phasing issue, I think, because uh, while going through the through track machine, it kind of there is a little bit of delay and direct monitoring is going a little bit faster. So I think that's pretty much it. But what we can do here right now is to create a scene. Uh, so basically first scene is gonna be our, let me stop it. So the first scene, I, I'd like to do A-B testing. So the first scene will be um, basically, I'm gonna go into mixer and put both of the volumes to minimum on the mic on the direct monitoring so basically right now we will be hearing only only mini log going through the through track and then scene b is going to be basically all the tracks uh like track one and, and and the rest just going into the minimum and so that we can hear only direct sound so this is direct and this is true, exactly the same. But if I step it somewhere in the middle, there is going to be a little bit of phasing issue because, because of the reason I mentioned before. Yeah, so at this moment, I have only one track playing back the mini log. And if I go ahead and uh, put on this track, let's say um maybe chorus yeah chorus i think is going to be a good demonstration of what's going to happen with low end and try to carefully listen to low end right now when i introduce chorus that's where you need the headphones i guess so let's go ahead so there is like right now it's not affected sound chorus became wider And what I like doing is uh, modulate with LFO the uh, the delay of chorus, and that's where it goes into phasing issues quickly. Like, like where is the bass line? Where is sub? It's gone. Let's switch back to original. It's there, but here it's gone. But how nicely this sounds, right? So in that situation, I'm gonna go into track two, make it through track as well. Um, input C and D, volume to the maximum. So basically these two tracks are exactly the same and they're gonna play mini log exactly the same. The only thing I'm gonna go and clear the chorus on the first one. And what I need to do right now is to, for example, mute the second track and play it back. And then I'm gonna go and remove the high end on the first track until I hear like sub bass more or less. Uh, what I usually do is also I'm gonna go and create like four pole filter here so that it cuts a little bit more uh, like steep and a little bit a little bit of resonance to to compensate the cut at the cut age. So this is how we preserve this up. And then we're gonna go into track two and move the bass to about the same position. Ah, now I'm doing this on track one actually. So here at 56, a little bit of resonance, about 12. And also the 
four pole filters and let's listen them together so low end separately high end and together and switching back to the to the original sound same but the fun starts when we can go and introduce chorus finally and um, only for the track too and here you can actually go crazy like as crazy as you wish because low end is protected is preserved and here you can go like with feedback all the way up isn't that cool so what i like doing is to go to the lfo page like grab the first one uh, make it really slow like something like this for example and then going into into the chorus delay at free this is original like boring mono straight into the face and this is I mean wow and all this time this is like this is effect taking into you know into far uh, crazy position I actually like it but for, for someone it might be like man it's too much but it's I, I kind of like it <laughs> that, that's that sound like wow I, I just like it I need a kick here why don't I have a kick ah because my Digitact is also this is so weird and this is not affected sound so let me let me stop quickly so what I'm trying to say is that you can go crazy on track two as the moment you preserved the sub bass on track one um, on track two you can go as crazy as you want like flanger chorus phaser reverb i don't know delay whatsoever because we have this sub bass which is gonna you know which is gonna be bumping and, and playing um together and and keep the energy and and the high end can be affected in a in a really really weird way so that's pretty much it for this tutorial i hope you found this tutorial useful and hopefully you can you can use this technique if you liked it, put a like on this video. If you did not, put a dislike and let me know in the comment section down below how can I improve those videos for you. Maybe that was too obvious, but for me that was an eye-opener actually a couple of days ago. Yeah, I mean, I'm not gonna even keep jamming today because I'm gonna get carried away as usual and, and stuff like that. I, I really hope you guys liked it again and yeah, have fun. I appreciate you hanging here. Yes, and I'm, I'm working on a, on a techno track right now. I, I really hope it's gonna be released and I'm thinking to start working on my techno EP and release it somewhere in the summer this when it comes to plans and yeah i'm really glad with this channel and with all your comments there i i really really appreciate genuinely appreciate every single of you on my channel guys um love uh peace ciao Drums could be 
it's also a nice uh, thing to to do the same technique, right? So what I'm talking about is applying effects on the drum machine. Like I have Digitact here and I, I like to put chorus on the high end, like hi-hats and snare and or clap and, and stuff like that. With chorus and like, again, slow modulation, of chorus, it might be really interesting and really crunchy, you know, like really, really, I really, really like it. And, um, but as soon as you have a kick on the Digitact coming into the Octatrack, you perhaps cannot use the chorus because kick is gonna be sort of destroyed or gonna sound weird. So let's try it out with the Digitac. So let me mute the bass line for a moment. So I have this through track right now here. So let me copy this page, paste it here. So I have two Digitacts playing and let's mute this one, go into filter again, low pass. Yeah, I found this like 56 is pretty cool position actually. Again, four pole filter. Man, it's quite hot in my office. Um, so there is that. And then we're gonna go into track six and filter again, four pole, 56, maybe a little bit further, 58 about 12 of resonance. Let's, for a moment. So this is without, this is direct playback. And this is through these two tracks, low end, high end, together. And now I can go into track six and Again, chorus, mix all the way up, feedback. Yeah, it does sound weird. Maybe less feedback. And then LFO, slow, something like this. And LFO is gonna go into the chorus, delay. <laughs> That's super weird, but yeah. Yeah, like... And I, I took the chorus into, you know, like into... Far, far, far. It's like really wet chorus. But all the low end is there. Kick is... Is there. Nice. Yeah, and then we can go with uh, with the ducking effect and yeah, whatnot. This is super cool. Works for drums as well. I mean, it's for you to decide though, but you got the idea. I like it. Cheers.